think we've got two sort of different stories here. You've got a team in OXG that, no disrespect to them, I think they played very well. We've cast them a couple of times. I've enjoyed watching them. It's been nice structured siege. Um, you know, it's been very good problem solving from them. They've got, you know, a lot of good things going for them. But I think it's fair to say if Newers doesn't, doesn't show up, yeah. it can be a little bit of a problem for them. He is by far and away the man who's getting the kills. Um, and if they don't come from there, you've got to wonder, you know, where are they going to come from? On the flip side, we've got Heroic, who are playing with sort of a, a late substitution in Sloth, who's fitting pretty well so far, um, you know, and, and they're making the best of it. Mm. And so there's, there's two quite different angles there. What I find really interesting about Sloth is he'd only played three scrims with this team before coming out for the event. And six months prior to that, hadn't really played the game. So it was like, hey, hey, Sloth, want to come back over and play? And he's like, yeah. How much time we got? Three scrims? Yeah, sound. Let's go. I spoke to him a little bit yesterday, and he did say, you know, the first couple of games, it did take a little bit of betting in. There were some comms issues. It wasn't they played bad, but there were issues they were clearly trying to work out. But they feel a lot of that has now been smoothed over. And now it's trying to go as far as they can. But like I said, like you were saying just then, for me, it's newers or bust for OXG. Sweater, being dead honest with you, just simply is not delivering the goods right now that you need from a player that's playing in these more aggressive positions. Whereas Sloth, if he's on his best, you've got some real scary frontline players coming in for Heroica. We'll turn this into an absolute bloodbath. That's the kind of game they want. Oxygen want a more structured one. Let's see who overwhelms the other. The thing with Sloth, um, you know, for, for many people maybe who are watching, you know, who aren't as familiar with the, the UK scene and um, and that sort of thing, you know, which which can obviously, of course, be forgiven if it's not your, your home region, but you might not know too much about Sloth. But for me, if you're going to bring a player in at the last minute and they just have to sort of work in the team, Sloth's the perfect kind of player to do that with <laughs> because he'll just... You, you can sort of say, look, the team are going to do what the team does anyway. Sloth, can you just go and get some kills? That's that's what you need to do. And he's going to go and jump out of a window. He's going to go and do something unpredictable and get a kill or two. You know, he, he is the sort of player that can be flexible and that can sit in there. That he has tried to play that style of game a lot of times and teams figured him out, which I think is why he's always struggled historically. I think yesterday I was speaking to him, you know, he was saying, right, tomorrow it's full Monkey King, which was a reference to a joke. I called him the Monkey King back in Challenger League years ago. He got it engraved on his AirPods, still has those with him today, and said, tomorrow you've seen the real King come out. So expect a lot of aggression on the defensive side. But to touch on this round, something I've seen out of OXG a few times playing this map is Fox 8 on this pulse. Often in the actual team overall, no matter what the map is, we've seen it on border as well. He's kind of plays in the middle of everyone else and serves as the, you know, as we know, as the IGL. He makes a lot of calls based on what information is coming back and forth. But he's always in the thick, thick of things. And here he's the one giving information to his team on where they're coming from and then looking to direct the rest of them around that. This actually rounds things out for us, getting a chalet today. I this know, will be the finally. Point at which Des and I have now cast every single map at Six Invitational 2023. And we've saved one of the best to last. We always enjoy a nice little chalet. So far, it's been tentative from these two sides, but it's your man Sweater, Des, who's going to get in, and they're going to need more of that from him today. Picks up Noodle, which is a great opening kill as well, and gives OXG an advantage. Fox here doubles down. You picked up on him with the pulse, and he's done the damage. Cardiac sensor feeding information in and Uno will be the unfortunate benefactor in this case taken down with the Nitro and that's five versus three. Sweater getting Noodle is the big one because again Sweater's been falling short Noodle has been mega for his team so far this competition top rated across the entire heroic lineup and a real beast in the KD and entry department though realistically across heroic three players are actually quite close to each other when it comes to entry so him being down isn't the end of the world it's more consistency that lacks from Doom and from Sloth though both have had a pretty good tournament so far as well. Zoom on the upstairs here. Knows there's a couple lurking below, but unable to really smoke them out here, force them to step away from playing inside a trophy, which means in these last 40 seconds, things could get a little bit ropey. New is being flashed out and forced away. Down come Heroic. They must know that he's tucked in. Yes, they do. And Sloth gets the kill with the Mark 14. Nicely played from Sloth and Grizzly there. Just double teaming Newers and making sure that he was in oh. a win situation. But how about that long range effort? Going to take Sloth down. In comes Sweater, managing to find one onto June. Sloth likely to be recovered onto 20 health, but with 18 seconds left, he is not long for this world, and nor is Grizzly as the final kills come in, and that is a nice opening round from OXG there. I'd go so far as to call that comfortable. I think comfortable is the exact word I'd use as well. You know, when they got themselves inside of uh, Solar and started working their way through, that was really the main point of ingress for this attacking side. You had the couple of Grizzly and Sloth working their way up towards 90 and all the way downstairs 
stairs as well. But it didn't really feel like it had much bite to it. By the time they got anywhere near looking at the site, two had already gone down. Oxygen showing some really good early round aggression and sort of tripping Heroic up before they could really get started. Into round two we go, and it's going to be down to the basement for OXG. Uh, looking down at the bottom floor, just opening up some nice angles onto the main breach. Um, it's always an interesting one, this, because, of course, historically, when we first started seeing this site um, in terms of competitive play, it was very much sort of push from that rear side, get big garage, get control of the hatch, plant in behind wine. And then we saw teams really figuring that out and bringing along new defences. I spent the longest time pulling out what little head I had left um, over teams reinforcing that hatch in dining. It's, it's all changed now, and teams sort of said, we need to think further than the hatch. We need to think further than dining. We need to extend out. And so it's gone just to a full map defence now. You'll have players up on the top floor. You'll have players sort of all over the place. And it is about a big roam clearance. Um, and I much prefer the way that we see this site played now to maybe what we used to see. What people at home won't know is I wasn't sure what was going on with your head then. I was like, how much hair did you have left? I was like, oh, you shaved recently. Was that a yesterday job? It's not. Uh, yes, I usually do it the day before broadcast, so it has a day just to <laughs> I'm exactly the, I'm exactly the same with the shave, Tim, so I get it. I it has a understand. day to settle, then, otherwise it's too short. <laughs> <laughs> a prime growing length. I'm like, trying to grow like a soccer field to play Behind the scenes, it's, it's the information that people want to know. <laughs> I love it. When does he shave his head? When does he shave his head? Well, the day before broadcast is the answer. Sloss being chipped out here through the drone hole I imagine almost got himself taken down as well it was a very very slow bleed as well one two three four down to about 20 HP not the ideal start to the round for the hanging animal himself he's playing on a slightly more what you look at as a supportive role here but we've actually had a number of entry fraggers Doki jumps to mind as people that have played the ace recently and using it in a more aggressive role because of the AK-12 and Grizzly up from up above, brings down death upon Nua's head. Off goes the Warden. That's going to be something that Heroic want to continue. He's going to be, um, you know, isolating Nua's and getting those opening kills onto him where possible, or at least take him out early in the round. As we've said, that's going to force OXG to find additional kills Do from they somewhere know? else. And it's going to be oh. Sweater that they're looking towards. And so far, like the postman does, he's delivering. Slip past the net there as well. Grizzly's drone. I'm not sure where it was watching. I did just see one for a second on the 90 down in the bushes that really should have seen this little attempt coming out and would have kept Grizzly safe, just not ro rocking through enough drones. But here we come with a go-to execute, Tim, that we are so used to seeing. Who knows it with the plant down? Perfect cover coming in from the rest of Heroic. Only two left standing here in a post-plant situation. This one feels won by Heroic. It, it's practically impossible to win at this point for OXG. Without winning, uh, you know, a, a number of insane gunfights, it just gets very, very difficult. They've opened the rear wall up as well, um, and Heroic are just going to sit back and watch long angles. I think they've got the hatch access. Um, they do indeed so there's just there's very little sweater can do here four and zero um is almost certainly going to at least see his first death um as he continues just trying to bounce back and forward see if he can find any kills at all the likely to be stat padding if he manages to find one and there he is shut down by noodle as expected heroic um perfect understanding of that post plant once you've got the diffuser down behind the wine there it's a simple case of holding those three angles one at trench one in big garage uh, and then one on the hatch at that point, the game is pretty much won. I did find it really interesting that we had Grizzly on the Thatcher being the one that was looking to clear through the entirety of the top floor. And we saw them get it off with just three players you know, in tow making things happen. I think chances are what they've done is open up the wall with Grizzly, then sent him upstairs once his part in that round was done. Again, unfortunate not to have the player core on the drone as they can push her in the piano. But at the end of the day, they only needed three on site to actually make it work. One on one, and up we go to Master and Office Tim. It's going to be the top floor. We tend to, we have seen this site really drop off um, in popularity. Des uh, it used to be like you know the the, the the insta pick. It was you know your primary choice was top floor master. Uh, but no, we see a lot less of it now. Bar and gaming uh, and kitchen dining particularly rising in popularity. And uh, I think it's one of those that happens. You know we've seen it on Villa for a little while. We have gone back to the top floor of Villa now. Uh, but for a little while we saw those ground floor sites getting picked up more and more frequently as primary. And, and what tends to happen is you get a rework on a map like Chalet. It comes in and there's a great site like Master and Office. So effectively, it gets overplayed. Same as defenders. Crash CC, yeah. yeah. It gets overplayed by defenders and it gets played so much that the attackers really figure it out. <laughs> you, know, you know what's mad? So it drops off. 
We've seen the Charlie 11 times so far at SI, 122 rounds. The lowest played site is Master and Officer 28. The highest is far on game with 33. Yeah. That is a really tight close spread across the four sides. It's unbelievable. Very balanced map. Who is? Doom. Ooh, again. Yeah. He's the third. That's the third time he's gone down. We actually cast a game of theirs the other day where, despite him being the second highest rated, he was invisible in that map. Like zero and five in one of the halves, I'm pretty sure. It was really painful to watch. So far, struggling to get himself into the game. I know Sweat has had a good start. Mainly built off the back of round one where he found himself a 3K. But we're looking now to see, again, can Oxygen disrupt this more aggressive, dare I say, somewhat chaotic game that normally comes out of Heroic? So far, only the answer has been yes in one of these two rounds. You know, we're certainly, we're certainly not trying to put everything on you as here. You know, it is more than a, a one-person game. But, no, but when did you start a player at the end of the, the day? The fact is, he's got the third highest kills at the tournament so far. Yeah, it's, it's and, and again, it's not to bash you, because if Shaiko was having a poor show, he'd be saying, where's Shaiko? Yeah, exactly. Not exactly he's a bigger player that you have to hold it to I'm a high I'm just sort of contextualising it and saying, he's got the third highest number of kills at the tournament so far at 122. Um, you know, it, it's his performances have been serious so far, and it is going to lead um, a, a sort of a gaping wound in the side of OXG um, if they're having to live without those sweater. As you said, doing well to step up at the minute four and one, but they're certainly going to need um, a lot more from him if this is going to be the case. Now, Fox is working underneath again on the pulse. We saw him have some success with the Nitro onto Uno last time around in round one when he was playing in this position. Vertical manages to pick up Sloth, levels things up nicely for OXG, and that's something that I feel they've done well throughout the tournament, really, is, is be able to level those uh, negative man count situations, but who knows, in a plant again, again here, does. What a cosy one versus one against Dream, who was trying to smoke things out by the looks of it, and it's got him behind half wall there, basically unscathed. Oxygen not able to shut down the Execute, have now got themselves into a very difficult post plant, much like on the downstairs. It's almost impossible to find a retake here once that plant is down just inside of the breach. Heroic up two and one here on Chalet. Well done, Sloth. Suck yourself into it. Come on, mate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a good turnaround for Heroic, obviously losing um, losing that first round. Uh, they've come back, they've bounced back nicely, they've got themselves a good couple of attacks. We would expect them, and the, the reason that I highlight particularly is we would expect um, you know the attackers to probably be coming out on top of things on Chalet, so Heroic just needing to make sure that they don't get themselves too far behind, um, which they've done a good job of so far. Remembering as well that this is OXG's map pick, um, so obviously OXG going to be uh, expecting to come away with a win here as a minimum. Uh, they're not really going to be happy with anything less, I wouldn't have thought, on their, uh, their opening map choice. Well, we go back to that same site where it all started and an identical lineup mostly coming out from Oxygen. New is on the frost once again. Fox A on the okay, pulse that found themselves, the opener and sweater, as we've seen throughout this half, sticking as well on the Azami. Unsurprisingly, given the 3-0 that he had to start. So, really for Heroic, I'm looking at what they're going to change this time around. They're the ones on the losing side of this equation. They've lost this site once. They're the ones who have to change and figure out what they can correct to get themselves through. Last time it was both Soft and Grizzly pushing their way up lower 90 and going direct towards site. And we had two or three working their way across the top floor, but they got absolutely deleted by Sweater and by the C4 coming out from Foxe. So a little more caution being shown by Heroic wouldn't be too far amiss. Here we go then, 15 seconds into the action phase, Heroic largely um, starting on the north and east side. It looks like pressure's already going to be in place on Office Balcony. Foxy nice. picks up Noodle and that's a good opener. The last few opening kills have gone Open in against the direction Noodle. of Heroic <laughs> apart from that first round. So it certainly seems like this is the magic site in terms of entry at least. And um, we're going to have Foxy just providing no information at the minute because he can't pick anybody up on the heartbeat scanner. But no information is still information in itself. It tells them that they don't need to worry about main lobby at the moment now then June he's going to start that top floor clearance working across he's in conjunction with Uno who opens the wall up with that skeleton key for him to give access and vertical is going to be coming under pressure very soon but he's got himself in a nice position here he's not going to overstay his welcome I don't think he's just looking to waste time he'll take a little engagement and then bounce back sweater he's going to get taken out by a bouncing nade there as June finds the explosive kill good start balancing things back here as well last time round they were down two men and we saw how the round fell apart from there here they're keeping themselves competitive in the four versus four. Almost half HP being taken away from Fox A as well. Looked like he might get caught out there. Still a C4 in his back pocket, so doesn't want to be going down too early. Cardiac Center, incredibly value to feed exactly where this attack is coming from. And you can see Oxygen stationing more players up towards Solar as well. Really looking to push the point here and fight on that upstairs and keep Heroic at bay. 
Sloth working across that top floor. Aiden Hand needs to be careful. Vertical will just take a few pot shots at him, but he's then going to drop away before the fight comes. Newers goes with him. And that is pretty much OXG pushed back to sight. And that could be slightly problematic for them here because there's a lot of time left on the board. They do have a man advantage, so it's certainly not the end of the world. But what they need to be careful of now, the next important thing in this round is that OXG don't lose players in the next 30 seconds. No, that's the big one for me. You know, holding on here in this four versus three is super important. We've seen a good few teams this week just throw away numbers of advantages, not once, not twice, but multiple times in a map, and you start thinking, God, how will we let this happen time and time again? So for Heroic, they're trying to do what they can here in the last 40 seconds with the number man disadvantage they have. Vert moving his way downstairs here, Michael, for a little bit of a backstab if Heroic aren't too careful. Potentially could do. They need to be aware of it. That's the problem that I spoke about. Sloth picking up Fox here, but they did at least manage to survive 30 seconds before that happened. No. no idea that Vertical was coming. He finds a nice easy one. Doom is going to find Dream, though. Cut down by Newers, who manages to get his first of the game to get his account rolling. And that is now a two versus one. 15 seconds left to go. And as you can see, Oxygen, they've scurried Des. They're not sticking around on site. They know they don't need to. It's going to be very difficult for Grizzly to stick this plant as Vertical and Newers are converging back in. I'm not sure if they're going to allow him to get it down, though. And they are. He's got his gun back up. He can at least fight here, Des. Chris, he can clutch this. He's been so quiet across stage three and across the tournament so far. Sure enough, off to his right, but then that's blindsided by Newers towards the right. Not going to win out this one versus two. Well played by Oxygen to force the crossfire, make advantage of the numbers they had, and the retake is complete. Two and two. That's how things are going to sit after four rounds. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I think, you know, sometimes it, you can get sort of overzealous, really. Uh, you know, you you know a diffuser's going down, teams will run back into sight and all of a sudden find themselves on the back foot, maybe getting a bit too aggressive in that situation. OXG managed it nicely. I was a little bit concerned at them just allowing Grizzly to get his gun up. I think they could have been there a few seconds earlier, so he didn't really have that opportunity because, um, you know, let's not forget Dash that we saw for loss one the other day, Des on border, um, when he was allowed to get his gun up after getting the diffuser down on that bathroom teller's plant and sprayed through the wall, one or two v one. You know, it happens. So they did give Grizzly the opportunity there, but not the end of the world. They positioned themselves very well. Kitchen um, and main corridor was a fantastic little crossfire, um, and it was pretty easy to close that one out for them. So OXG played that one well and get themselves back level. It's 2-2. Two -two. I had a bit of a chat with uh, Dream as well yesterday, so I reached out to a few of the players just to kind of go, look, what do you feel went good? What do you feel didn't go so well during the group stage? What can you improve on coming into this fixture? And most of them said, you know, we feel we've worn up as the week has gone by. Both of these teams have said the same, you know, Oxygen. We keep on talking about Sloth being brought in as the sub, Noodle being a new player. Absolutely. Let's not forget this is also Sweater's first tournament like this as well. So as much as there is some experience on the team, it's still a little bit nervy for them in terms of what they've got to deliver at such a big event as well. So both teams are kind of on this rise, they feel, in terms of how well they're playing, what the communication is like, the IGLing of both sides. But it's definitely one they've got to grow into. And Dream is a player that Anne highlighted on the desk. Really objective focus. When we get into the second half of this game, I'm really keen to see how many plants we manage to get down. We haven't seen tons coming out of Heroic so far. Had the couple that we've seen in the rounds that they've managed to convert, but Oxygen have had answers otherwise. Some could say that's for that for a, a support enjoyer like me, he's a dream to watch. <laughs> Very good, Tim. Absolutely disgusting, but okay. There we go, I'm going to take it. Um, no, but, you know, all joking aside, yes, Dream is a player that I really enjoy watching. Like you say, uh, you know that he's, he's, he's laser-focused on that opportunity to plant. And the, the clever thing about Dream is, as soon as the opportunity presents itself, where we'll see some teams maybe hesitate sometimes, he's already there getting the diffuser down. You know, as the words are coming out of, of our mouths saying there might be an opportunity here, bang, you see it going down. Um, and Dream certainly doesn't miss a chance um, to get that diffuser down. And he obviously, uh, you know, sees the beauty in oh. getting the case down and playing the objective. Now then, Fox is going to move himself onto the blue stairs. He's just been forced back a, a little bit there. He's going to play a little bit deeper, um, but not the end of the world. He's going to be feeding that information in. They are aware of him, though. The jackal track, uh, or was it Swat? I think it's on got Swetter. Up. So Fox has got away with this here. And again, Heroic got hurt by vertical. Previously, they're not aware of what's going on underneath. There's... 
I think with the Jackal coming along, their whole goal was to try and sm like smoke out those that are below. Sweater on the entry. What a game he's having so well far. This time it's Doom up. being taken down. The Yana offline. Grenades in back pocket. No longer available in the round. But just to go back to that point, they knew that they'd have Foxe playing downstairs. So really, Oxygen have doubled up and sent Sweater down there as well to kind of expect this level of aggression coming through. Noodle on his one, but Sweater finds a second. We need to crap talk him a little bit more, I think, Tim, because he's absolutely flying so far today. He's certainly picking things up. Noodle didn't do his job there. Um, you know, sorry to call that out, but on the Jackal, down in basement, you've got Pulse down there. Um, you've got the Legion down there as well. You can't allow players on that basement and mid-floor to be going in and getting kills like that. I think not enough aggression um, from a Jackal in that position. He's got tracks ahead of him. You've got to go in and get those kills, and ultimately, it has cost Heroic a couple of lives. Grizzly is going to pick up Newers, manages to get a second. How many times do we see this from Grizzly in the mid-round as where he just goes in and gets killed after kill after kill and brings things back for heroic 25 seconds thing is cardiac sensor they see absolutely everything that's going on above them now grizzly can do absolutely nothing but look and hope and pray needs to get hold of the diffuser still as well but doesn't have control here because of that cardiac sensor on the below goes to the table there is no c4 to come through but they might be able to just find him here as vert comes charging his way through will grizzly be able to stick it no he will not as fox say does find the angle and they get the finish better time in this time from xg managing to get to that planter in at the point where he was defenseless uh close out the round it was it was well played from OXG. It was, but for a mid-round flurry from Grizzly, um, I don't think that was a particularly close round. As I say, I think Noodle maybe just lacking a little bit of aggression on the Jackal there when he's got those pings coming out. He's got that information. Um, you know, as heroic, you can't be giving away lives at that point in time to players on those lower levels. You've got to be focusing on getting them dealt with. So a little bit of a misstep from them there, but not the end of the world. Uh, three, two now we have on the scoreboard, and I've got to say, Des. I feel that that favours OXG at this point if they can take at least an even defensive half. Yeah, I think where the telling sign is going to be really for me in that second half is one, does Dream get away with the plants we've seen so many times? On a map like Chalet, absolutely. But really the biggest tail of the tape in that second half is going to be again Sloth on the defensive side of this map. They've done pretty well on their attacks. We've seen plant after plant coming down as well. So we've seen three out of the five rounds, I think, with the plant going down so far. But I'm just concerned that on the defensive side, we might not see as much capability as we've seen here in the attacking side. Nevertheless, let's get round six out of the way first. Got to see what happens here as to whether or not Oxygen push up to that 4-2, as you say, Tim, or if we end up with that perfect 3-3 split, of which we have seen... I think very many 80 three, three of our games have gone to 3-3 three, three splits. It's been ridiculous. It has been very, very close across all of the games that we've seen. And honestly, I don't see this one being much different. Um, but I'm not convinced that Heroic will take this round. I think OXG are looking pretty solid on the defence at the minute. I've been uh, I've been impressed with them on the whole. Yeah, I don't know. think Heroic have got the answers. Sweater is looking to get aggressive onto Noodle, but he's on the upside down rappel. Sweater's sort of focusing on that lower window frame at the minute. Um, needs to be cautious, of course. He's going to keep himself tight along that wall which is going to prevent the angle um, presenting itself for Noodle but he is ready for any transfer across there and I think there we is. go he's going to get his just reward much better start from Noodle I was critical of him last round absolutely not this round really good patience from the Amaru there would have been easy to go in through the window to try and find that kill but no he's got it and it's allowing Sloth to move across the top floor much better from Heroic yeah, that patience being shown, especially by a player so young as well, because let's not lie, most of them come through playing a lot of rank, for example, maybe a little bit of T4 play, where normally the pace and the aggression is the name of the game. You can just out, you can best people with your skill, essentially. So already to see that level of composure being shown, just to kind of take it a little bit slow here, move forward one step at a time, looking really good so far from Noodle, really impressed. Heroic have still got a lot of work to do here. As you can see, we've got the, uh, the trifecta of defenders are still in place. You've got one in library box, one in mezzanine, and one at top blue stairs. Vertical is going to take a little bit of damage from a nade there, but still in position. Um, and basically, once one of these players gets killed, you'll see the others starting to dip away. Once you take one corner of the triangle, it makes the rest a lot weaker um, and a lot easier to push. But at the, at the minute, Heroic haven't been able to find one until Sloth gets that. Steps out, though, and New is able to get his kill before, predictably, he dips away. Foxy is going to find his life taken as well, and a perfect example of what I was saying. One corner goes and generally the rest will fall.
it's those moments of chaos where you're always going to find Heroic coming out on top as well. They play really well with the numbers advantage, though. Knowing that Oxygen realistically you can't commit every single person to holding on that top floor and have won with the numbers that they had on their side. Two left standing here. Heroic with 30 seconds on the clock. Needs to be really careful not to throw this one away. Noodle Collect Stream, who is playing down inside a split. There's one left standing. It's Newers, who's out by Fireplace. Temporary 2v1 coming in, and Grizzly has got the angle. Heroic looking good and composed here so far, Tim. Yeah, that was a better round from Heroic. I was a little bit concerned on a couple of their previous defences. Uh, you know, maybe not um, taking the opportunities for kills that, that have presented themselves. But two great ones there. The first one we've just seen, and the second one. Perfect replay operator as well. Thank you very much. Um, the two that I wanted was um, the kill to start things off onto Sweater. As we said at the time, great patience from Noodle. And then that follow-up nade into, into Library Box there, uh, just to take apart that triangle that was holding them back. Really well played from Heroic. Nicely done. The one problem Heroic have maybe got at the minute or one of the problems they've got moving on to the defense we've got Newers who's managed to find I think he didn't have a kill for the first three rounds so in the last three rounds he's got five he's starting to get moving and once those kills start coming back for OXG they will also start looking like a different team because let's not forget Foxy, Sweater, Vertical have all been picking up the slack that's what that's the question we were asking if Newers doesn't get them who else will well we've got our answer and it's been going well for them so far so at the minute they come in here onto the attack with four players sort of hot, hitting their shots and ready to go and that could make this a, a little bit of a nightmare for Heroic. Well we've said this throughout the entire week realistically is that a lot of the games we've cast feel like team games it's not down to one player going absolutely nuclear and dragging their team over the finish line it is a similar story in this game, one player either side, Uno and Dream respectively, not having the best of games so far but they've been in more supportive capacities anyway so it's kind of whatever. Here we get to see though that difference that I spoke about, do Heroic crack here, has Sloth figured out how to become the true monkey king and embrace his real self or will oxygen simply be far too superior on the attack what a c4 dream cannot catch a break this game he's been picked apart every single round poor sod unbelievable absolutely beautiful and uh, i'll just give uh, props to the observer there as well i'm not sure who we've got with us today Sayano we've got um, fantastic from Sayano there great work to see that um, absolutely wonderful view that we got um, of that opening c4 not easy to predict those ones but um, he was all over that so well done Sayano um, the the an interesting stat does um, and that makes it even more interesting so far every round has gone with the entry kill um, so whoever has got the entry has won the round and heroic have just come out there and got themselves an entry now it's a doubly big entry for me because we've spoken about dream he's this objective player he's this you know fantastic support player who's going to be the one going in putting that diffuser down um, looking for that opportunity he's on the Hibana as well so he's a large portion of their hard breach capability which is now limited. <laughs> absolutely six spots here down beautiful from heroic on the defense so far looking electric the sweater almost getting set, set up there a second time he's going to make the smart call to back away here those columns not that thick sadly to keep you alive for too long 3v5 then for oxygen who have been torn apart here realistically should have been a four versus four fox here be kicking himself that he didn't get that kill onto june but this is what you're dealing with. These boys can be absolutely cracked. And as we said before, do not mind bringing things down to a little bit more of a frag fest. Sloth just going to hold the angle. The thing is, Heroic don't need to get aggressive now. Um, if we have a look at what's going on, we've got Sloth, Noodle, both sat inside a site. Grizzly out um, over in Solarium. Uno as well back inside. They just they don't need to overcommit here. Um, they've got Jum who's just going to hold his location there um, at the top of Blue Stairs. Uno is going to lose himself to double window, but that tells them that there's only two inside of the map at max. Um, so I think they're looking pretty good at this point, Heroic. They can just hold their angles. I mean, really, Grizzly hasn't actually yet moved out of Solar. Either that or has managed to get his way back in, even with this pressure coming in. They know what's coming upstairs. They know there's a player stepping on through. Sweater now, no doubt, has given away his position with that shot coming out, which means Beautiful. Grizzly's going to get some support as well. Coming in from both sides, he can get back on his feet and probably find himself a kill here. If he times it right, looking out towards the window, down goes Sweater. And Zoom just hits another naughty shot. This time it's Newers, makes it a third on Vert. What a round from Zoom. A fantastic round with some great kills, but there's one thing particularly um, that 
as I briefly said there that I want to pick up on for June. That cover of Grizzly was absolutely wonderful. So Grizzly hits the deck, Sweater's coming upstairs, and Sweater knows exactly where Grizzly is. He's been shooting through the floor at him. They know roughly where he is, so he knows that he must be prone. We can see that from his ADSing. And as soon as he's about to step forward and make that challenge, Tracer's across the front of him. And he can't take that extra step that he needs to find that kill onto Grizzly. And that was absolutely brilliant from Doom and Heroic to be able to keep Grizzly in that position, prevent the repelling from Solarium window, prevent the push up the stairs, but also to keep Grizzly safe and alive. Really, really nice. Here we go then with a almost identical lineup to what we saw Oxygen running on at this exact site. Sans the Kai that we saw earlier on, and of course, Sans the Pulse. Instead, we have Grizzly coming along with the Maestro and those Laser Gates coming in from Sloth on the Aruni. So, with how things are looking so far from that first round, it's always hard to call it off the back of one. Really, you want to see the first three to get the gist of how things are going to play out. Oxygen here. You've got to be hitting those shots. You can't let June get away with it. Dome in Fox Aid doing exactly the same onto Nua's on the window repel as well. Just so, I'm just out, out gunning them right now, Tim, it feels really, to be honest. And I know we said both teams have got players contributing, but looking at Noodle, looking at June, both Tata 8 and 4, we need a real challenger on the other side. Yeah, you just need somebody to step up. You know, a big round, 2-3 two, kills, um, and just fire. To be fair, OXG are, are right in this. It's 4-3. Um, OXG need to pick up an attack here, I think. I, I don't think they'd like to see it go 5-3. Uh, they don't want to go, you know, to their third round before picking up an attack, because at that rate, they know that Heroic um, can just win by attrition at that point and can just win their two first choice sites. Um, so a little bit of a problem presents itself um, at that stage for OXG. But overall, I, I don't really have many negatives for either team, Des, in honesty. Um, I think what we're seeing here is two good teams competing with each other. And at the minute, Heroic have just managed to find the edge. Um, but that's not really, I don't think, because of, of major mistakes from OXG. Um, you know, they've, they've been unfortunate in a couple of circumstances, losing Dream to a Nitro out of Solarium window to start with. You know, it's not something that you see every day. So um, I think, to be honest, it's, it's more that Heroic are winning it at the minute. I agree with you as well. I do think they're looking really, really good. It's just good. a good game. Yeah, just, it, it's no, just it a is. great game. It is a good game. It's what we wanted to see. So Noodle here stepping across in towards bathroom with that Kiba Barricade just giving himself a moment, moment of safety. While Sweater on the other side, they're having to use one of those breaching rounds to get that cleared away. Sweater with a great shot onto Sloth, though, on the Aruni. Good little cross from the piano there. Straight up, a couple of bullets to the head gone. Aruni, another one of those operators that they won't worry too much about losing. Um, she's got the... Uh, oh! Doesn't quite find the kill, but does manage to down Uno, and it looks like our stat might continue, Des. Um, I don't want to jinx it at this point, but the last round, opening kill went to Heroic, round went to Heroic, um, and that has happened in every single round of the seven we've had so far. The opening kill this time, going to OXG with Sweater picking it up. <laughs> Absolutely clean sweater out of the round. Beautiful. It's so frustrating as Oxygen. They're getting swung on constantly and can't seem to really do anything back the other way. It's great intuition being shown by the players coming out of Heroic. But Oxygen have got to find a way through this. Vert, Fon and Noodle, that's at least one sort of thing you want. Grizzly, the roaming Aldebaran. Who cares about having a fast three speed on the go when you got that chonky boy to do some damage? Vert onto Doom, only two left standing and both a bullet from death. I think that uh, OXG are in a very good position here. Three versus two, as you say. Heroic low health. They've got vertical control. 20 seconds left to go. They need to think um, about the diffuser. I don't think they have it in hand at the minute. No, Newers is going to go and collect it. So there is the opportunity now to put it down. Um, I think with 10 seconds left, it's time to get in and get on with that, which he is going to do behind the bomb chassis. Should be fairly safe here. But Uno, he's laying in wait. He knows no, he's going to take his opportunity, but misses shots, but somehow manages to still find that kill onto vertical low health. Help, just using every little bit of those hit points, but Newers knows exactly where Grizzly is going to push from, cuts him down, and that leaves a 2v1. It's all up to Uno. He's low health. He's going to have to push through and start finding kills, and the big problem is there's got He's got vertical. one above. Foxy has gone and got that vertical, and that is smart play from the sledge, and that, you would expect, is that as Newers manages yeah, to find the final kill, and OXG oh, level oh, things up. Entry oh, kill. Oh, they win the round. It's 4-4. It was a real weird gunfight between Uno and Vert as well. Remembering that Uno was on 20 HP, a bullet would have put him in the ground, but Vert not able to collect a single one. And even Uno initially missing out on the one versus one as well when he had a free shot at him. Here, look, just dancing around those bullets. But around the oxygen still get on the board. 
see how things go. Neither team yet taking a tactical timeout as well. Not too surprised as we are set up four and four, Tim. It is a close, close game. As I said, I, I feel like it's one of those games where both teams have turned up. Um, you know, they're both having their moments. They're both playing well. This is thoroughly enjoyable. It's uh, got me on the edge of my seat, Des. I've not thrown that one in yet. I think that's the first time I've said that one, this SI, but it well and truly has got me on the edge of my seat. It's a great game so far um, and one that I am I'm definitely enjoying. And I'll be honest, I can't complain if we see overtime in this first map. Um, of course, just to remind everybody of the stakes, uh, the loser of this matchup will drop down to the lower bracket um, and we'll be playing um, another match after this one. Um, the winner, of course, will go on um, and continue across the upper bracket. Well, indeed, it is still at that stage to talk when people aren't going home yet. No, no, not quite yet. That comes we haven't tomorrow. Got those games. Yeah, they start tomorrow. Will I we believe. not have some today? No, no. So today is entirely upper bracket. We have this first round, then we have the next round. So the winner of this game. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, of course. Sorry, we game. have the yeah the yeah. winners play today, the losers play. Today. Yeah, and then tomorrow is all losers bracket. Then Wednesday is all upper bracket again, which then means we're going to more lower bracket games when things resume on Friday. As Thursday is a break day before. Those of you that are coming along to join us will be joining us, obviously, at Plus Bal here in Montreal. Super excited oh, for the actual wait. land part to get underway because a full audience, like the dome shape that we have at Plus Bell, just screaming at the players and cheering them on. It's unbelievable to witness. The thing is, for, you know, if, if you've never been to, to an SI, it's just... I've, I've been as a, a fan back in 2019 particularly and it's just such a, a great opportunity to you know to spend time with people with similar interests uh, you know with the rest of the community and honestly you know I, I cannot wait after experiencing it at Charlotte in Berlin particularly I absolutely cannot wait for everybody who's coming to get here um, and to, to get that opportunity to spend time with the community and enjoy the games together it's going to be absolutely fantastic I just but, like being in the arena for the actual oh, reveal is the best part it's amazing Every, yeah, everybody good. gets so excited. This is that's the stuff that I mean. <laughs> if you've not experienced it before and, yeah. and you're on your way in a couple of days, get excited because you've got a lot <laughs> to look forward to. Um, and it is a, it's an awful lot of fun. So um, an awful lot of fun is yet to be had here as Noodle is going to pick up the opening kill onto Vertical. And that's going to give Heroic um, not just an advantage within the round, but with that trend Landed. that we've seen. But Dream is in here, Des. As I said, if he gets a sniff of an opportunity, he'll take it. Good. And he's going to get the diffuser down. Four versus one now. Grizzly, he manages to find Dream, but his job was done. It's too late. The diffuser was delivered. And that leaves us now in a one versus three. Grizzly knows they're going to be on the outside just hiding in behind the pillar. He's doing everything he can. He's dancing around, but no, it's going to be Sweater to find the kill and that's going to be OXG bucking the trend as they took the opening death, but they won the round and that is going to give them an advantage. I was going to criticise the somewhat there as well because we have the lesion sat in the corner of library. Gets flashed out yet manages just to beeline it straight to the hatch and drop down when Newers was the one originally sat on the south window who has that angle to take him out as he goes for that kind of drop but either way he does a wonderful job set up there on the hold as well protecting that top floor so there's no ability for the plant to be denied gets two kills up there as well really was the big enabler for that whole attack and the rest and had to put their focus on executing on the site good bit of team play out of oxygen all right now find themselves down around that's it and that's two rounds uh, in a row and just Oxygen managing to get themselves a, a nice little lead now. Um, Giving yeah, themselves some breathing room, getting a little bit of Oxygen you know, in their lungs. <laughs> Go on then. I'll give you that one. If I can have Dream earlier, you can have that one. <laughs> um, Oxygen, they... I think might just start to build a little bit of momentum now. That last round was uh, was pretty conclusive. It was on a good site as well. Uh, you know, being in game, and it is a, a tough site to win sometimes for the attackers, but they got the job done pretty easily. As I say, it's got them two rounds in a row. It just feels like they've uh, they've notched it up a gear, but Heroic have also shown us great ability so far, so can they slam the brakes on here? Can they derail the train that Oxygen are becoming um, and just level things out? It's going to be kitchen and dining. We saw this in round eight. It was an OXG win. Heroic weren't able to hold on to the top floor, which hurt them. And we'll see if Oxygen can work as good a clearance again. See what the focus is going to be as well for the defensive side. I mean, sadly, it's... Oh, Grizzly, move. <laughs> 
that really, I'm pretty sure that impact would have killed his evil eye as well as he tried to destroy it. Like, okay, we'll go with it, fine. The one thing I was going to say is for Sloth, I know we spoke about him wanting to have a better defensive half than we've seen previously. He hasn't had a kill in two or three rounds, I don't think. We're sat at five and four, I think, coming into the second half, so it's been a quiet three rounds. Yet to really make himself a known presence. He's playing on the Mark 14 across both attack and defense, so at least trying to create some stability by playing with the same gun. But... We need to feel his presence, because as I said, if he doesn't really step up today, the team of Oxygen will just take them apart. Heroic are uh, using those Kiba barricades um, pretty uh, openly to try and cut down those angles. They're uh, using them to play in behind piano, play on double window. Newers is still um, without a care walking across. He's looking to get aggressive and find these kills. I don't think they know that he's got himself into master bedroom. It's an absolute freebie there. The call is going to come and the fight is a little too late as Uno dies inside a side slot. The best he can do is pick up a trade and that leaves us in a four versus four. I'd be raging if I was Uno there that they managed to get away with this, but they are going to on top floor. I yeah. know, yeah. Oh, that nade. Oh, cooked for another second. It would have been to perfection, but this one a little bit rare. Not quite got the explosive power needed, but Doom finding Foxe through the wall here. The problem is that kind of became an isolated one versus one that Heroic ultimately have won, and Oxygen now lacking a little bit of firepower and pushing through this top floor. Doom doing a fantastic job in those gunfights at the minute. It seems to, no matter what, always comes out just on top. He's got a fraction of health left, but he got his job done. Uh, that's unfortunate for Heroic as Sweater takes down Sloth in a nice kill. His game's still going well. Nine kills so far um, and really helping his team along. Dream finds Doom. The little uh, health that he had left is taken, but Sweater is deleted, leaving us now in a two versus two. 30 seconds left to go. And I feel like they've got the advantage here, massively heroic. They've still got the Azami on side of Noodle, who's been having a wonderful game. Grizzly as well. Yes, they're largely out of utility, but Oxygen don't have much to throw to the table here either. They're going to have to either drop the hatch or just charge down back stairs. And with 15 seconds on the clock, there's a lot of room for error to be made. Here we go on the push down as the flash comes through, trying to march on forwards. But it feels like heroic have scattered to the high winds. They've hidden themselves down in basement, hidden away behind the bomb chassis. The clock is going to win this one for heroic. It feels like Grizzly collected a consolation kill. But Dream here is going to have nothing to do. It's a closeout for Heroic. Heroic level it up, and we are going to see all 12 of regulation. This has been a consistent theme, I would say, following us at SI 23 days. But let's be honest, it's followed us for the last three years. Um, yeah. Just consistently getting the long games, the, the max rounds, the overtimes. It just keeps going. We are in man advantage. I need you to fucking fall back. You cannot fall back for that We need to keep the man advantage. The thing is, is right there at the end, like we're just kind of like just stalling. So it's at that point, like someone needs to come up with a game plan, either get all back down to sight. Like we were on the window for way too long on solar. Like at that point, just group the fuck up and just play for the trades. Like I like the confidence. We're in complete control of this game. The problem is we're getting the first pick and then no one's there to trade once we die. All right? So once we get that first pick, like I either need someone to run away or we need to play together, right? So new went in for the first kill and then we fell back. All right, we got this, go. Come on, we got this. Let's focus up, we got this. If they, like, if they go back there next Yo, round. Yo, good shit. Bert, I need you, I need you to just pick up a spot. New, I need you to just pick a spot, Bert, and just- Don't leave me hanging, bro. Bert, <laughs> I think I've actually been really curious to see when the first time I came in between these two coaches because they are two throughout the week that we said actually the impact they're having. Yeah, they've been very impactful. And very different styles as well. I think it was something we were talking about in the group chat with the, uh, all the casters and the analysts here. And we were saying, you know, very different styles we're seeing where some coaches are there for the hype, the energy to get the players talking and communicating, which is such a critical part of winning a game. Others offering more kind of precise advice on where to change things. But I think you've kind of seen that from both coaches there on both areas where at the very start, Heroic, you know, Mr. Officer said exactly the right thing, I think, to stop this. Look, you're overhanging here. We keep on speaking about how little impact he's having on the defense side and officer believes that comes down to him just overhanging and being around for far too long when they've already got the man advantage and he's losing out in his 1v1s whereas on the other side it's saying cool we've got to be able to play for trades and we caught that in the last round too many 1v1s being taken and you're not going to win them against players like Joom and Noodle like of course you will every now and then, but it's not going to be consistent is the issue. Interesting as well that both pieces of advice from the coaches there um, sort of almost potentially play into each other for a problem for they Heroic. Do. Yeah. Um, you've got Mr. Officer saying, look, we need to don't overcommit, drop back a bit here. And then you've got Redeemer sort of telling them, go after them, go in, you know, you need that confidence. We need to start pushing forward. You know, and if both of those things happen, you could get Sloth and others dropping back off and you could get Oxygen chasing them heavily um, and you could end up 
in a situation where Heroica getting pinned back in the site quite early. We'll see if that's exactly as it plays out. Um, but for the time being, we find ourselves in round 11. Only one of these two teams is going to get an opportunity to take this map in regulation. Obviously, we're not worrying about points anymore. We're not in a, a group situation. Um, we are sort of in a, a winner takes all. This is knockout time. Uh, the winner will continue in the upper bracket and the loser will drop down no. to the lower bracket. T Tim Knox Band. Oh, good one. I'm not giving you that one. I traded your dream for what other terrible pun you threw in a couple of rounds ago. I can't give you that one. That was the oxygen and breathing room. Yeah, I'll give you that one. I'll trade you that. <laughs> All right, then. I'll take it for now. Second map, I get a new one, though, because there's plenty more in the tank. <laughs> Here we go. Sweater looking to work his way in. I think he knows about a player being sat super tight. Just doesn't quite see him. Sure oh, enough, he does. Beautiful. And it's oh, could you ask for a better target to find? Absolutely fantastic opener from Sweater. Um, you know, every time we come into a game asking for more from him, Des, he seems to deliver. Um, it was like that in the final group stage game against Lost One, where we said uh, we need to no. see a little bit more out of him. And he, he absolutely delivered that day as well. Dream, he's going to find his kill on to Sloth. And that leaves us now in a five versus three. I'd be interested to see... Um, I didn't see exactly where that kill happened. You know, was it again? That's a overstaying sweater. Does manage to find Noodle, and this is looking pretty free for OXG oh. right now. Newers picks up a double at the end, and the tack timeout, if anything, has certainly gone in the favour of OXG. Realistically, we can see another one here because it was OXG that called the last one. Heroic might be able to call in their tack timeout here. We have another conversation. Nothing I've seen yet come through, though, so maybe they're just going to play on. But I think the advice probably stays. In fact, no, there it is. It has come through. Heroic calling an attack time out here to have another conversation. Put some energy into it now, yeah? Let's fucking yeah. go. Let's fucking go. Let's Let's fucking go. Make sure, Let's make sure go. if we leave Chimley and Library and all that shit, then make sure we reinforce the office walls. I am not playing cattle, guys. I'm playing mute, so they yeah, can't taste my balls. Yeah. Okay. They're going to sit outside, I'm going to do more. I'm just going to sit there and here. Love the interesting part there where Mr. Officer made the decision to kind of back away and just say, you boys talk, I'm not, I'm not talking, you've got to figure this out. And that's not him trying to back out of it and say, I haven't got an answer for you. I think that's kind of similar to what I spoke about, you know, Lycan said a couple of years ago to me was, you need to be able to teach a team to be able to figure problems out in themselves. You can't help them in the middle of a round. If you are trying to do everything for them, how are they ever going to learn? So I almost feel there where Officer has said, look, you guys I already spoke to you a round ago. You know what my feedback is. You need to figure this one out. And the boys have had the chance to try and do that. Just, I think probably the final few words that he added around energy is the one thing I'd observe. And look, it's really hard to say, oh, be high energy, even when you're getting slammed. But this is a close game. It's 6-5. It's far from over yet. Heroic do really to build themselves up here as well. Look for this team play that they were speaking about because that's what served them so well alongside Jume and Noodle having a scream of a game so far. 100% Grizzly there. Uh, interesting words at the end, just picking up, you know, I think feeling that the team were playing a little bit too individualistic, uh, you know, moving on their own, uh, moving on their own plays. He said there as well, you know, we're leaving positions. Um, so maybe just not fitting, yep, you know, not, <laughs> not fitting into the, the overall sort of team plan for the round. Um, and that's something that Heroic are going to have to figure out quickly. Um, we're going to have Juma up on the top floor, taking himself out a couple of drones. The site is the top floor as well. It is going to be master and office june drops himself down to basement for the time being um sloth is likely going to play his life here on the blue stairs and try and prevent this push that's coming in from new as any second which i don't hate like we've just said don't step past your position he pushed too far past 90 he got to the point where he was exposed left right and center pretty much everywhere he was exposing himself to and died to dream on the front door he is sat in behind his utility though picking out drones where he can and that's really all he's got to do here is plant his feet force some drones to come through, wait for Rateros to start coming in, whatever else needs to do, and then back yourself away towards safety. Lots of support from Joom downstairs as well, though. Joom, 
Well, that's the kind of confidence you want to see from a player like him who's playing the way he is so far. Takes down Newers, great start. But that's what Heroic want to see. Sloth has a position to hold. Doom is the player on the roam who can go and take those fights. They don't want to lose that Blue Stairs position. And the reason Sloth needs to hold that is he's the Azami. He has the utility to hold that. The reason that he needs to hold that is because... Oxygen now can't take library. They can't work from library in towards mezzanine to open the wall onto the half wall plant spot, for example, because Sloth's just going to come up and hit them on the flank. And that's why that position was so important, because it now forces OXG to move away, to rethink, to adapt. And that's really well played, because if Sloth gets over ambitious there and tries to get that kill onto Newers and loses it, it's not really a position that Doom can just step into. So Doom does need to find that kill. Finds himself another onto Fox here. This is going really well for Heroic. Oh, just please don't give him a third, for the love of God. I mean, it'd be the third 1v1 that Oxygen have found themselves stepping into. The, force, what, the first one, sorry, definitely forced by Doom. And it's Dream finding Sloth here, who was dug in. You heard the last keeper barricade come out there for a second as well. So was hoping to be in a position to be able to hold it down, but simply caught blindsided by the march forward across this top floor. Oxygen getting themselves into a better spot, but Tim, I can't help but ignore the clock here as well. Still with a lot of work to do, walls to open, for example, and there's only 30 seconds to play with Doom still out on the roam. Yeah, I'd agree, and Doom is the key factor at the minute. I think Sloth's done a good job there. Two minutes, 15, he's stayed in that position and prevented them from opening this very wall. 20 seconds left to go. If Oxygen win this round, they are going to have to win it. It's going to be a very good turnaround from them. 15 seconds left to go, and Dream is getting that diffuser down. Looks like he's going to stick it. Doom hasn't been able to have the impact that we expected. Loses an important fight there as Sweater manages to get a kill on Blue Stairs, and that just sets OXG up to win what will be a real turnaround here to take Shally. It's one versus three, Noodle. He's, no, it's two versus three, sorry. Noodle is doing everything oh, he can, sweater. but he's going to be shut down by Sweater. Better. Vertical final kill and OXG take a great win on Shally with an excellent late round execute in that final round. Great flank watch as well. I was nervous with only two drones left on side, but one was watching the right man and there was nothing that June could do. Fantastic resilience to pull that back as well, given how everything started out. Heroic, got to have a conversation, but Oxygen, newest especially, really warming into that game. The longer things went on, he was zero and four at one point, Tim ended what, 12 and eight? Real turn around performance and now Heroica got to find somewhere. They'll find the answer somewhere. Hopefully it's in this break. Back in a few minutes.